This is an early edition of KCAL News at 8. I'm Mike Rogers at the desk. We're following a CHP pursuit now coming into the downtown area that started in Orange County. We have SkyCal's Desmond Shaw overhead. Des, I just recently saw them try to use a spike strip, right? That's right, a spike strip on the freeway, a very rare technique. And here at the end of rush hour traffic, a definitely a dangerous maneuver for CHP. Uh, it was not successful, though. But I can tell you what they were doing was standing in the center divider, and then there were two units in the pursuit with the unit in the rear basically doing kind of a fast-moving traffic break to try to give some space to that officer to then unfurl the chain. They were out there standing in the roadway. Very dangerous, but uh, this driver was a little bit too far to the right of the freeway, so it did not appear appear that that spike strip made contact with any of the tires on this late model Toyota RAV4 uh, in pursuit here northbound side of the five. Not too many confirmed details on this other than the obvious failure to yield. CHP may be privy to some other information on this one, but uh, they came out of a we understand it was San Juan Capistrano CHP that began this pursuit. So Southern Orange County now getting into LA County and approaching the East LA interchange at the five and the 10 and the 101. So we'll see which of those three freeways uh, this suspect decides to take, Mike. Okay, I'll take that, Des. Thank you so much. We're just uh, breaking into our regular programming here to bring you the latest pursuit here in Los Angeles of the CHP pursuit of this driver wanted for failure to yield. I'm Jeff Vaughn. Mike Rogers, you heard from him just moments ago as we broke into this coverage from the assignment desk. And sitting next to me is Susie Saw as we continue this uh, breaking news coverage of this CHP pursuit. Let's go back up to Desmond Shaw in SkyCal. Des? Yeah, Jeff and Susie, here we are at the East L interchange, and that's the 101 on the left. So it looks like the suspect sticking with the five. That's been uh, kind of the MO this entire time that we've heard about it has been northbound five the entire way. Uh, so what is the destination of this person? They've already covered a lot of ground uh, in this uh, SUV. It's kind of smaller size, maybe more economical SUV, not one of the big gas guzzler ones, this uh, Toyota RAV4. Probably getting some decent mileage. Of course, you wonder how much gas is in the tank. We have no way of knowing, but you know, when you cover that much distance, of course, you, you have to wonder just how much fuel is left and where they're going. Again, just a failure to yield is, is all we've heard about at this point. Haven't been able to confirm any other details from CHP. Uh, so we'll see if they decide on another spike strip or something like that. Had the option for an exit that would have taken them into downtown or Boyle Heights, but deciding to stick with the five. So we've now transitioned from the Santa Ana Freeway to the Golden State Freeway. They will be up towards the 110 and the two beyond that. Uh, so a lot of different possible connections for this suspect uh, wherever they decide to take this one. Desmond, uh, talk to us about, once again about the spike strip that was laid out. Was that actually on the freeway? You saw that happening? It was. So the uh, officer standing in a fairly narrow center divider there in Commerce, just south of the 710, uh, we'd heard them talking on the radio how they were trying to race up in front of the suspect and get in place so that they would have enough time to uh, try to attempt that, you know, perfectly timed spike strip. Definitely the most difficult of any type of mm -hmm. spike strip operation, obviously, is going to be on the freeway because the vehicle's moving so fast. You have to have perfect timing, and it's really dangerous for the officer. They were standing uh, in the two left lanes when they unfurled that spike strip, uh, and then you had the coordination with the, the two other units in the pursuit. Uh, unfortunately, just uh, it, was, it was not successful. The suspect was a little too far to the right. I'm not sure if they saw that coming or what, uh, but they were on the right side of the freeway. So it was it, a very well-timed operation, but it was uh, not a successful one. I want to bring in Mike real quick. Do we have video of that attempted uh, spike strip? Deployment? We are. Yeah, and I was just looking back at it, and, and you know, Desmond's right. The suspect did not hit. It uh, did not hit it at the time. And oh, okay. I'm counting one, two, three, four. It looks like that spot was like six lanes wide, um, which as Desmond was talking about is difficult. The other difficulty they're having here, I can tell you, I'm listening to the radio traffic, is the license plate on this car they can't get what they call a return. So they don't know who it belongs to. The plate is out of state, which could be some of the difficulties they're having. But, you know, generally in situations like this, especially for a simple failure to yield, mm -hmm. you know, it's possible they would just let it go and try to catch up with this person later. One of the problems they're having is that plate, they're not getting any return on it. They're not getting a hit on the plate. So they have no idea who's behind the wheel. Do you know what state the plate is from? I believe they said Arizona. Arizona. Hmm. Yeah, so it's a neighboring state. Okay. Yeah, we do know it's a, a woman that's driving, but that's all they know. And as you can see, you know, Desmond calls it the uh, the pursuit package tint, but it is, you know, those windows are pretty dark as Desmond yep. doubles in. <laughs> yeah, just incredible. You know, Mike, you're talking about the spike strips being laid out. I mean, we're talking about six lanes here. And 
at 757 at night, I mean, thank goodness there's not a lot of traffic on the 5 freeway right now because if there were, I mean, they probably wouldn't attempt something like that, obviously. Well, right. And, you know, I mean, it, you mentioned it. It's remarkable at any time of day, really, that there's this much open space on the 5. And this person, this woman, has been on the 5 freeway uh, exclusively since this started, since they were down in, um, you know, southern Orange County. They've been on the 5 freeway the whole time and really have not hit any traffic. Uh, they could be going a lot faster. They are going about freeway speeds, maybe a little bit under, but uh, you know, the freeway's been wide open for them. Let's go back up to Desmond Shaw. Des, I'm only going to ask this because this has happened before. Do we think that this person knows that they're being pursued by police? It doesn't appear that they're really driving aggressively. Uh, they're staying in one lane. They're not really going above posted speeds by a whole lot. Are we certain the driver knows they're trying to be pulled over? I, it would be very hard to argue that they that they would not know. I mean, I, I can see even the reflection of uh, on the back bumper there and the, from the back window. You can see the flashing lights behind them. So, uh, if if there's some kind of you know communication breakdown or if this person just not in in a good state of mind, um, that's you know the only the only thing that I, I could think of uh, for uh, to to make that case. But it is pretty obvious. Um, you know, that they are trying to stop them. And then, you know, they're going to be calling out as well on their loudspeaker. I think we've all seen CHP or perhaps some of us have been pulled over mm -hmm. by CHP and they'll they'll give you instructions and you can hear pretty loud, you know, hey, pull to the right, exit here, you know, pull to the side of the road. So we know that they're, you know, very capable of communicating uh, with this person. So um, they, I would I would have to assume that they know that they are uh, being pursued. Uh, the only airship in the air, to my knowledge right now, is actually a CHP fixed wing uh, that is overhead right now. So they're going to be a, a little bit above us uh, right now. They definitely have some airspace issues that uh, we will not have to worry about nearly as much as them. Although on this trajectory, northbound 5, um, they're, they're, the CHP fixed wing is going to be in, in pretty good shape to follow this one for the duration. All right, if you're just joining us here on KCAL News, this is an early edition of KCAL News at 8. This is breaking news. The CHP pursuing this car, a RAV4 from Orange County, from South Orange County, all the way up to the East LA area. And now we are well into LA in Elysian Valley near Dodger Stadium right now. And it's just been incredible for us who live here in Southern California just to see the freeway this wide open on, I mean, it's a Tuesday night. You know, granted, it's 8 o'clock at night, but I mean, it's incredible just to see really no cars around this person. Yeah, how often do you see that? It's amazing it's how rare. when we have these pursuits, we sure. see wide open highways and freeways around L.A. And when you and I are driving around uh, at any time of the day or night, sure. there always seems to be traffic. But this is wide open as it can get. Two CHP vehicles behind this uh, RAV4, this Toyota, uh, with uh, dark tinted windows wanted for failure to yield. And uh, we believe that this is an Arizona plate on this car. So police are not able to run a tag to find out exactly who is behind the wheel or at least give more information as to who may own the vehicle. Uh, we don't know how many people are inside, uh, but this is breaking news here on KCAL News of CHP following this driver wanted for failure to yield. And we're talking about failure to yield. I mean, you never know what else is happening. You know, why are they not stopping right. for the authorities? Right. And, you know, to, to Jeff's point about, um, you know, do they know they're being chased? I was mm -hmm. able to play some of the radio traffic back, and it sounds like CHP may have had some sort of um, interaction with this woman prior to her actually getting in the vehicle and taking off. Oh. So uh, that would lead me to believe that she definitely knows, you know, she's being chased. Um, you know, again, the, the exact nature of what CHP was doing and what kind of contact they had and why is all still being worked out. But, you know, I mean, the beauty, and we've talked about this before, the beauty of CHP is uh, they're a statewide agency. Mm -hmm. You know, they could chase us all the way, you know, to the northern part of the state if they wanted to. And we've already seen that. They've already switched out with the San Juan Capistrano office, the Santa Ana office, the Santa Fe Springs office, Central, and now we're going to come into the Altadena office. And, you know, they'll just keep playing that game where they swap cars over and over again until this person decides to stop. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the dark tinted windows. Let's go to Desmond Shop and SkyCal. So, Des, this is a, you know, a situation where the units can't get up next to the vehicle to see inside, which is a big advantage for officers. And, of course, it's illegal to have that dark of tint all through, or at least the two front windows. So that's illegal in that aspect. But just tell us about the challenges that law enforcement has when it comes to a vehicle like this. 
Yeah, I, you know, and unfortunately, this is what law enforcement is seems to be dealing with with nearly every single pursuit that we have are, are these dark tinted windows, you know, and so they they can't tell what this person is doing inside, uh, what what they might be reaching for, what they might have uh, in the way of anything illegal that could be next to them. Um, you know, this is all information that they would certainly like to have and, and they're not privy to any of that now again there is reason to believe that there is just the one person in the car it seems that chp is pretty confident of that so at least that seems to be one thing that they are not too concerned about because we've seen plenty of shocking situations where we thought there was only one or two people in the car and then there's five or six so you know the tinted windows and then again just going hand in hand with nearly every pursuit is this a uh, very lucky pursuit traffic now tuesday i believe is the lightest traffic day of the week and then we're also getting into you know post rush hour now at just about eight o'clock uh, but remarkably wide open on this northbound five you'd still feel like you would be seeing a lot more cars than you are right now so i'm wondering maybe even if there, there's some units holding back some of the on-ramps mm -hmm. or or something like that they have been talking you know or hoping anyway to uh, uh, perhaps you know try a spike strip again at some point if if they're able to do that so um, it's it's very possible that they could be holding back some traffic at some of these on-ramps we've certainly seen that uh, in, in pursuits past as well yeah, that's for sure and you know to do something like Thank a you. you know spike strip obviously it's a very very methodical thing you don't just throw it out there and hopefully that person hits it. I mean, officers, they have to be positioned ahead of that pursuit. First of all, they have to deploy and pull them back fast enough so that the uh, pursuing other officers, they don't hit them. And they have to be positioned in a, in, a, in a way that actually they have to hide so that they can be out of the way, first of all. It's a safety issue for it's a officers, lot of too, especially on the freeway, no less. Yeah, yeah. No, of course, they're putting themselves in danger every time they do that. And they did that at the commerce area where they deployed it from a median. Mm -hmm. Think about how dangerous that is when you place yourself in the middle of uh, traffic like that. Um, as we continue to take a look at this uh, RAV4 that is the center of this uh, latest CHP pursuit of a driver, we understand it's a woman driver with out-of-state plates from Arizona wanted for failure to yield. You know, Jeff and Susie, we were just talking about spike strips, and one of the things I was listening to them coordinate is not every unit carries spike strips, right? right? So the units that were immediately in pursuit didn't have any, uh, so they were trying to get other units. One of them had, you know, said, I'll break off of a traffic stop to try to get ahead to, to get this spike strip out. So it is something they're trying to coordinate. It's not always the easiest, as you mentioned, especially on a freeway. And just really quick little desk logistical things. Desmond, uh, there's, they just switched to the blue. So if you want to listen along with us on the blue, the blue is the radio frequency they went to. So I just wanted to give Desmond that heads up as we uh, continue on the five through what Burbank now looks like. So failure to yield, explain a little bit. Of, I mean, that, that's a wide range yeah. of uh, offenses, right? Right. Well, right, exactly. I mean, failure to yield is just the simple, they didn't pull over when the lights and siren right. turned on. But why did CHP, what was the probable cause for CHP to try to pull them over? What was the reason they wanted that? That's all still uh, being worked out. And, you know, like I mentioned, there was... Uh, it sounded like there was some interaction with this person mm -hmm. prior to them leaving. So, you know, who knows what exactly happened or what this person is wanted for or if they're, you know, trying to check on their well-being or exactly what happened down there in Orange County. Yeah, we're not just talking about a traffic infraction here, something maybe more serious. We have no idea at this point. Right. I mean, there's, you know, there's a reason they haven't given it up. Sure. Right. I mean, you know, there's, there's information that they know that we don't. Um, and, you know, CHP, you know, I kind of rank all the agencies. I, I always say CHP will chase it till the cows come home. Um, but even CHP would give something like this up if it was just a simple traffic infraction. Sure. Yeah. So there's obviously something that they know that we probably don't that is the reason that they want to keep pursuing this. Desmond Shaw is up in Sky, uh, Sky Cal. So Des, tell us a little bit about uh, we, you know, when, when people tune in, they see this. A lot of them might think that this is an opportunity to do that pit maneuver. We saw a pit maneuver yesterday that was very effective. That's not so much on the highway, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. It, it's extremely rare to see it on the freeway. I've only seen it twice. Uh, one that that seemed to frankly be out of protocol by LAPD and, and in full speed traffic uh, many years ago. And then another maybe uh, eight or so months ago, uh, which was in really heavy traffic. So you had traffic going so slowly that there was not so much of a concern about injuring any innocent people. It was in rush hour traffic on the 101, I believe in Sherman Oaks or, or Studio City. We have a wide open freeway right now. While there's not a lot of people around, 
it's we, we just don't see pit maneuvers typically above 30 or 40 miles an hour. So mm -hmm. I can't imagine that it, that is in the offing. Now, if you did notice, it looked like that there was indeed a unit who was there at that on ramp here in downtown Burbank that was holding back some of the traffic. So that may be why we're seeing some of this lighter traffic. And I'm also noticing that these units are, are kind of hanging back a little bit and maybe preparing to run a traffic break or something if, if per perhaps they have spike strips somewhere uh, uh, up ahead. That's kind of what I've been widening out just to see if I can see any of those officers either on the, the right or left side of the road trying to do that. But either way, you know, kind of in the middle of the freeway now at this point, so it's going to be a, a bit of a reach for either side of the roadway that the officer goes to if they are still doing that. There had been some chatter about that, but I haven't seen any other attempts uh, since that first one as we uh, are making our way out of downtown Burbank and uh, we'll be up towards Sun Valley uh, and uh, the North Valley pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult for officers to sort of guess or surmise where they might go next. And that's why it's so hard to lay those spike strips down when they can. Uh, you know, sometimes if they can see a pattern of the suspects driving, then they'll deploy it, you know, so that they know exactly where it is. And sometimes, you know, CHP officers, they're so trained with this, obviously, with the freeways that they know some good spots to throw them. Um, you know, so they have some specific spots that they might be able to do that. Looks like we lost our picture with Desmond Shaw just in Sky Cal. Yeah, but you know, just to talk about what we're talking about here on Breaking News, uh, this is KCAL News at 8, an early edition of KCAL News at 8. Looks like we're going to be getting our picture back here of this breaking news, a pursuit happening right now. The CHP in pursuit of this RAV4, the driver we believe is a woman, being chased by the CHP uh, since down in South Orange County. That's right. Uh, the uh, failure to yield, as you mentioned, is the want. The out-of-state plates are from Arizona. We understand they did have some sort of contact with this woman before uh, this uh, pursuit began, and maybe that's the reason why this began, and she had a failure to yield, and that started this whole pursuit. And uh, the one thing that we can take a look at, uh, Susie, is uh, on the positive side is there's not a lot of aggressive driving. There's not a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. We're on the highway. We're northbound five. We're all going in the same direction at this point in time. There's not any crazy behavior by the driver mm -hmm. in cutting anybody off. And so far, so good in that regard. That's true. Let's bring in assignment desk editor Mike Rogers. Mike, uh, you've been following this from the beginning, too, along with Desmond. I mean, we're talking about a CHP pursuit on a freeway that usually... I mean, it's crowded out there. The five freeway near Burbank, are you kidding me? And this is incredible. It's like a holiday. Yeah, and the, just the amount of ground that this woman has covered. I mean, we're talking, you know, San Juan Capistrano, which is just about as south in Orange County as you can get. Now we're coming through Burbank, almost through Burbank now, like in the Sun Valley Airport. We're just, uh, just to the east of Burbank Airport. So, you know, as we go north, if this person continues the northbound five freeway, we'll, you know, end up in Castaic and... You know, that'll be all she wrote, and they'll go to Bakersfield. So, Oh, uh, there was oh, a spike strip. Spike. I wonder if that was a good one. Let's go up to Des. Des, uh, were they successful in that? Yeah, that one looked very successful. Mm. Yes, uh, they were. They didn't even have to get out of the uh, off the right shoulder there. Officer unfurled that. I don't think there was any way that she saw that coming, and that was definitely slowing successful. Down. Looks like it's already having an impact on this vehicle. Yeah, already slowing down a lot. It may have even hit all four tires. Wow. The way that I saw that spike strip bounce out of the way definitely got the front driver, and I, be I believe both of the, the left side tires looks like they are deflated at this point. So that was a textbook maneuver. And I feel like this is something that we didn't really see very much from CHP until fairly recently mm -hmm. was, the, was the spike strip attempts. And uh, look at this down to uh, you know, less than half the speed that the uh, suspect was just at. That spotlight from uh, CHP's helicopter, they just came and joined this and relieved the fixed wing aircraft. So they do now have the lower level uh, air support from their helicopter overhead. And let's see how this suspect decides to take it. As yeah. we know all too well, just because all, even if all the tires are flat, that doesn't mean that this is going to end, uh, you know, super quickly. This could still go on for for quite some time, waiting for the rubber to separate from the wheels. And <laughs> we've seen it go even farther than that in the past. Well, bite your tongue. We don't want that, Des, <laughs> because, of course, that uh, could put a lot of people in danger. But that did certainly have an effect. Let's try to get uh, back to that spike strip deployment here, if we can get that uh, video racked up. We want to show that to you. That's going to be on the right-hand part of your screen. And, Susie, you see the uh, officer right there. Yeah, and right went, there. I think all wow. four tires. Johnny on the spot. No kidding. 
What a good hit that was. I mean, you could really see it, too. And, you know, we're talking about the spike strips, and, you know, Desmond was talking about how it's already slowing down the car. Well, if you know uh, some things about spike strips, you know, there's three rows of hollow spikes, like an accordion, sort of, and that's what you see the officer throwing out there when you just saw that shot. And when the suspect's tire hits them, a spike breaks off, and it goes into the tire, and it slowly takes out the air, like like a straw, if you if you you know put a, a straw through a tire, and it's going to go out that slow. But if we're talking about all four tires hit, then it's going to be a lot faster. Yeah, let's uh, go back to the assignment desk and Mike Rogers. Mike, uh, this is uh, really a game changer uh, when they can get. We think all four tires, but certainly has mm -hmm. deflated a couple. Uh, this vehicle has slowed down quite a bit. Yeah, you know, really remarkable they were able to do this on the freeway. We see these spike strips all the time where they'll, you know, hit the back left or the front right or the, you know, and so they're playing this game for an extended period of time of trying to get all four tires. Mm -hmm. So to potentially be able to get them all at once is is huge. And, you know, Desmond mentioned that night sun that's coming on from that CHP helicopter. It's a good time as the sun's going down. That CHP helicopter was conveniently located at Burbank Airport, which is not usually where they live. They usually are in Fullerton, but they were at Burbank Airport because they were helping out Glendale PD on that protest that turned violent in the city of Glendale. Uh -huh. So they were in the best position they possibly could have been to now offer this support, offer a light as it starts to get dark. But, you know, to your point, if this car stops eventually, we're already going 20 miles an hour. I mean, regardless of, you know, that the car hasn't stopped yet, the traffic impact to this is going to be huge. If there yeah. wasn't traffic before, there certainly will be now because CHP at the end of this is running, uh, you know, what they call a break where they're starting to swerve at the end of the line here to keep traffic from getting up to the pursuit. So now you're going to wait for this person to stop. If they stop, you hope that they get out right away. If they don't, then we're dealing with an even longer situation that Desmond's showing us right now. You see that last unit there uh, doing that traffic break. So it's very quickly probably going to begin to impact the five freeway. Yeah, it might be a good idea for those people to get off on Sun Valley at the northbound five and exit uh, to allow these law enforcement officers to deal with this slow moving uh, CHP pursuit. Susie, what? An amazing job wow. CHP did from the right shoulder. If we get a chance to show you that video again, we'll put it uh, on the inset box. But just a great deployment of the spike strips as the uh, driver wanted for failure to yield. Went over that at about 60 miles an hour. You'll see that on the right-hand part of your screen. And yeah. bloop, right there, I'd appear to hit all four tires. Just incredible. You know, and the thing that they're only trying to damage and disable the suspect's car, you know, um, and, and they have to wait for an area they can be deployed safely to. And incredibly enough, the five freeway open like this. I mean, granted, there is a traffic break behind this pursuit, as Mike and Desmond were just showing us. But I mean, the fact that they were able to do that, you know, across all those lanes is just incredible to watch. It is amazing. And Des, you alluded to it earlier. Let's go back up to Des and SkyCal about how even though we have uh, a number of flat tires on this vehicle, uh, it could still go on. And here it is probably, you know, five, six minutes later. Mm -hmm. And, well, she's still going. Yes, indeed, still going. And we'll see just how... Uh, how well these these tires will be able to hold up before they finally separate. You know, sometimes it happens really quickly. Other times it uh, it, it can take a while. It's it's typically with the suspects that we see where they still try to push it. They still try to get to 40, 50, even 60 miles an hour on flat tires and. Uh, it is possible based on what we've seen in the past. That's when you really start to see uh, the tire begin to separate from the wheel a lot more quickly. Other times when they when they really slow it down and we're now down to about half the speed that we were at, uh, that rubber can hang on a, a lot longer than you would expect. So it, it looks like that's what we're dealing with. And then again, even even when that happens, uh, these suspects can continue on wheels. And that's when we start to see sparks flying all over the place and uh, and stuff like that. I do wonder if now that we're down to really, really slow speeds, if CHP wanted to block off ramps and basically completely isolate a section of the freeway, if they would now feel comfortable trying to do a pit maneuver or something like that. But maybe not because of, of, of the flat tires. We know mm -hmm. for sure there are at least two, possibly all four flat. It, so while it seems like it might be a good idea to try something like that, uh, they might still deem that that might uh, you know, not, be, not be safe for for the suspect here, you know, they, they do factor these suspect safety into a lot of the decisions that they make. Now, here we see another one racing way up ahead here. Oh, yeah. uh, so we'll see uh, how, how that plays in, into it. If they're racing up ahead to try another spike strip or, or, or if they're trying to hold back uh, any traffic on any of those uh, on ramps, we'll see what happens with that. But we are now uh, just kind of gingerly making our way through Sun Valley on the northbound five. 
not seeing any lane changes. It has not changed the way that the suspect is behaving. I, I think they've only changed lanes maybe once or twice that we've seen uh, for the entire length of this pursuit. So where are they headed with all these flat tires? Yeah. That's and, a good question. And just incredible to see the coordination of what's happening here. This operation right now, you see the night sun from the CHP chopper. Uh, you see that CHP unit go way ahead and race ahead of this uh, pursuit, as Desmond was referring to, possibly to, to create a traffic stop ahead so that they can contain this. And Mike, you wanted to add something. Yeah, you know, kind of reminding me, and Des was, um, I believe Des was with us on this pursuit. Uh, CHP, we actually watched them, I think it was in Palos Verdes, mm -hmm. box the suspect in. Um, you know, so if they don't have reason to believe that the suspect's armed, and I want, point, if I'm pointing out that CHP car on the right, on the you can side. see uh -huh. he's got his, um, his floodlight on uh -huh. his front window trying to point in. So they might be, I'm wondering if they're trying to get an idea inside the vehicle there. Uh, figure out what's going on. But, you know, it's possible they could try to box them in, and that's why they got ahead of, of, of the vehicle as mm -hmm. well. You know, it's interesting, and uh, Mike, uh, you can chime in on this uh, as we continue to follow this breaking news of a CHP pursuit of a failure to yield driver in that Toyota RAV4. We understand it's a woman driver with a license plate from out of state, Arizona specifically, we believe, and they did run over a set of uh, spike strips there just about 10 minutes ago, and it slowed down about 30 miles an hour. But we have seen in past chases, Susie, you and I have seen chases go all the way down to the disc brakes, sure. the axles, the sparks are flying on the highway, and you get, you know, maybe the two tires that are intact that sure. push the oh, front, that front of the one's already coming off. Oh, Look. yeah, you can see that You can see around. some of it already starting to damage. Oh, yeah. But we've seen it go farther than what we've seen where we are right now, Absolutely. all the way down to just the nub of these uh, axles. You can see pieces of uh, yeah. tires just flying off that car right now. You know, now it's just a matter of when this person is going to come to a stop because it will happen eventually. It's unclear right now if all four tires were hit, but we it do have like confirmation, it. that's for sure, that the left front driver's side was certainly hit. As you can see, sparks now yep. flying from that car, as Jeff was just referring to. Yeah, let's go up to Des, because Des, uh, this is doing a lot of damage to the uh, left front quarter panel. The car is just getting chewed up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever actually seen this happen from uh, for, from a spike strip from what, once the rubber starts to separate, it looks like it's like whipping up into mm -hmm. the wheel well, uh, wheel well and has it basically kind of damaged, like, like you said, the front quarter panel. So, uh, you know, that's very unfortunate. Just, uh, I mean, it's still just property damage at this point, but, you know, you see what ends up happening from a, a simple failure to yield and whatever else is going on now. You know, this poor vehicle, there it goes. Good wow, yeah. just yeah. whipping all over the place. That, that the wheel well there, uh, kind of thrashing about before it finally separated. And imagine and how the loud that, that is. Rubber. Right. Uh, yeah, definitely loud and uncomfortable in there, no question about it. So, you know, things are definitely getting pretty hairy for, for the suspect as well. So it, it just seems like the suspect has pr practically got tunnel vision or like they are, they are just totally it, not aware of what is going on around them or they don't want to be aware or just willfully ignoring it. But um, it, it's it's just, yeah, a, a very bizarre situation. You know, sometimes we have obviously the super crazy pursuits, the one that was short yesterday but was really wild. Other times you get these where they're just on the freeway, they're not changing lanes, but they're not stopping. They're just going ahead, ignoring everything around them, and that's what, what we're dealing with right now. Northbound 5 as we will soon be making our way uh, through Pacoima and to the 118 freeway. Yeah, you know, this is a front wheel drive vehicle, so that's going to be the first uh, bits of the rubber uh, falling off of it because that's really pulling the vehicle. Mm -hmm. But as she's still going uh, about 30 miles an hour uh, despite losing the left front rubber on that rim and uh, obviously starting to lose, you know, pressure in all the tires and it's just basically running on flats. It's just a matter of time before. This car is disabled, but Mike, we've uh, seen people drive very disabled cars uh, a lot farther than where we are right now. Exactly, and you know, as we keep going north, you know, I believe there's a, another pursuit Desmond and I were doing over uh, near the Diamond Bar area on the 57, where this is a similar situation. The you know tires were all flat, and once they started hitting those hills, that car didn't have enough traction to go up. So I mean, if they make it far enough to where we get towards the five and the 14 split, we might see this car start to struggle mm. to be able to even pull itself, you know, up the road. I know that was an issue um, on that pursuit I was mentioning, you know, and just to your point about, we, we never know what these people are thinking. And, you know, Desmond was saying that this person just seems to be willfully ignoring what's going on. I, I was playing back the video from the, uh, from the spike strip. The, the person saw the spike strip, put their blinker on. 
and look like, you know, oh, I just got to make a lane change here and then huh. keep going. So, you know, you never know what any As of these. As if to try to avoid it? Well, yeah, like, you know, like she just saw, oh, there's a road hazard there. Got to get around it, you know, and put their blinker on to signal wow. um, and then obviously ran it over. So it's just, you know, nobody ever knows what, what's going on in the minds of, of these people sure. or what they've been dealing with before. Um, but, you know, yeah, that was Desmond's point is this person's hardly changed lanes. They've never really gotten above freeway speeds and they just kind of seem to be doing their own thing here. Yeah, yeah. Desmond, can you see from your vantage point, we know that there's a break behind this pursuit and we saw a couple of the units rushing ahead of the pursuit. Can you see those units now ahead of them yet? No, you know, they, they mm -hmm. went way, way up there. Yeah. Uh, I'm not not entirely sure where they went. Just seeing if that, no, that's just uh, somebody up there who's mm -hmm. uh, pulled over. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I widen all the way out here, mm -hmm. you know, as we make our way past uh, Van Nuys Boulevard, you can see no one around. So um, definitely holding back some, some traffic, I, I believe, at this point. Uh, we'll just see how this is beginning to affect traffic on the five, mm -hmm. since it doesn't look like this will be ending anytime soon. Yeah, a lot of uh, frustrated people here uh, probably maybe getting off from a midday shift or whatever, just trying to get home. And now they're getting held back, wondering what is going on uh, up ahead of me. Uh, so, you know, this then this is uh, as, as L.A. as it gets, you know, one person doesn't want to pull over. They just got spike stripped. Uh, they no longer have a front driver's side tire. They continue to go and it's uh, starting to aggravate a, a lot of folks that are just trying to make it home for the evening. And really quick, sorry, I just want to jump in. I'm listening. If you notice the the airship's night sun moved away from the car. Apparently there's another car that they're dealing with ahead of this one that is continuously stopping in lanes. So. I don't, that's the airships kind of got now they're moving their attention back over here. But mm. so that's another thing that CHP is trying to deal with, if, whether or not that person knows this person or if they're just a looky loo. But, you know, that's also an issue that now CHP is dealing with. So that could be another reason that some of these cars have pulled off to go ahead to make sure that the road gets cleared and people don't stop and make this worse. We saw evidence of that as that uh, cruiser sped past this uh, vehicle that is disabled and uh, probably to get up to meet that other vehicle to see what's going on there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, darkness is falling across L.A. You see that, tire, uh, yeah. <laughs> that little bit of a tire oh, there, boy. the tread that was uh, left behind just moments ago. And the thing that gets me on this, and I'd like to have you uh, kind of talk about it, Des, is just to the extent that people will drive these vehicles beyond what a normal person would. I mean, you know when you get a flat tire, you know it, you pull over to the side of the road. And here, somebody's driving on four flats, the tread is coming off, the tire is shredding, there's damage to the car, and yet they're still going. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all had a flat tire at one point, and it's such an uncomfortable feeling to try to drive for it on it at, on any length of time, and I just think, oh, I'm going to do damage to my wheels or, or whatever, just going to make things worse, and, you know, you just stop immediately, and, uh, you know, shout out to AAA. That's why I, I've always carried them uh, for that reason, and then you just have, uh, there you go. So, so here's, here's some of uh, the units they're verifying what I was suspecting about holding back traffic. So you can see right there as they're holding back the ramp there at, I believe that's the, the Paxton on-ramp to the North Five. But uh, yeah, and then you have these suspects where it's, it, you, you, it's like truly mind-blowing how far a vehicle can really go if the driver wants to press it uh, as, 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 as hard as possible, where we've seen them basically riding on a brake caliper before. It was actually a pretty similar situation a long time ago on the eastbound 10 with someone just same lane, they got spike stripped, just stuck to the left lane the whole time, just drove until the vehicle literally would not move anymore, and then just sat in their vehicle and then finally gave up. And it's just like dragging this out as far as, as you possibly can. Some people, you know, they're like, okay, they mean business. It's time to, it's time to give this one up. Other suspects, just nothing doing, just going to go as, as long as they possibly can as far as the vehicle will possibly take them and, and just kind of run out the clock, so to speak. It's starting to swerve a little yeah. bit. You know, the engine has got to be laboring because yep. of this. And we've seen uh -huh. that time and time again. The engine, uh, of course, at this point in time can easily overheat. There's such a load on it with these four tires and uh, the tread being gone and just uh, probably uh, trying to uh, accelerate the vehicle above and beyond what it can. It's getting down at about 25 miles an hour. But when it hit that spike strip, Susie was doing 60. We saw immediately, uh, once those tires deflated, it got down to about 30 miles an hour. Now with less tread, there's just nothing but the rim on the left front. She's still pushing it. By the way, the driver, as we understand, is a woman, has pushed it to you know, still 28 miles an hour. Yeah, it's hard to see, obviously, because it's dark out there. We got the CHP uh, sun from the helicopter there on um, this car, but 
you know, it's difficult to see if, in fact, all four tires were hit. We can see the ones on our side, on the driver's side, and you can see the car swerving, certainly, as Jeff was referring to. Um, but it's hard to see if the uh, tires on the other side, on the passenger well, would, side, were hit. I would, well, mm -hmm. so since it was deployed from the right-hand side mm -hmm. and the left side tires are punctured, I would assume that it would, of course, run over all four, mm -hmm. whether or not that they uh, deflated or not, mm -hmm. I guess, remains to be seen. But I would think that all four tires would have ran over mm -hmm. that. Well, and I, I think when sure we saw like one of the debris spin off, I believe it came from the passenger side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, at least one of yeah. them yeah. had to have come apart. So I would, I would assume that all four tires went over the mm -hmm. spike strip. Looks to me like all four deflated. Pretty good job uh, still pushing it, though, nonetheless. Yeah, just incredible to watch here. If you're just joining us here on KCAL News at 8, this is breaking news, a CHP pursuit that we have been following since the Orange County area. This all started in San Juan Capistrano, as we understand, in South Orange County, and made its way up the 5 freeway. And it hasn't changed freeways even once. Up the five is what we've been uh, chasing here, and the CHP is uh, holding back cars in the back of this pursuit, and in front they are driving ahead so that they can uh, close off some off ramps and on ramps onto the freeway so that they can keep the public safe, obviously. Uh, it's unclear right now how many of the tires are uh, out right now, but we do believe at least two that we've seen for certain um, have fallen off this car. So uh, this car at any moment could stop, <laughs> but like we've been saying, <laughs> It's unclear when, truly. Yeah, and this uh, pursuit, uh, we went uh, live on the air just about 35 minutes mm -hmm. ago, so we want to take some time to show you exactly what's happened yeah. since we went on the air just before 8 o'clock. That's going to be on the right-hand part of your screen. We'll keep the live picture up on the left-hand part of your screen. But that is the point in time when the driver, a woman with an Arizona license plate, wanted for failure to yield, uh, ran over those spike strips. This is when that uh, left front tire started to shred. And of course, you see the damage as well right that's here? being done. To the quarter panel, just pieces of it flying okay, are, everywhere. Are we doing a pit maneuver here, Des? Take Looks it. Looks like it. Now, well, I'm wondering. They're, they're, yeah, I mean, they're getting right up next to it. Like, I think, I think they might do it here. You know, I speculated about it earlier. Let's see if that's what they're trying to do. Uh, it, yep. Now, look at that. For the third time ever, a pit maneuver on the freeway. Will this uh, bring this driver uh, to an end? Will this stop it? Uh, the, the vehicle might just wave the white flag after all this that it's been through. And uh, now facing sideways along the freeway. So we saw CHP setting this up. They were blocking traffic to make sure no one else would get involved. And once they had all kinds of room with no other innocent people around, they decided to do the extremely rare pit maneuver on the freeway with some flat tires. Very well done. Now facing uh, perpendicular to lanes. And uh, we'll see if, uh, if, if the suspect decides to uh, come out. CHP now out with weapons drawn. That was a pretty good pit maneuver, wasn't it, Susan? That was incredible. Yeah. And, you know, as we were talking about, uh, Desmond was, you know, speculating that maybe that could happen just because of the freeway. I mean, it's, again, it's rare that we have these wide open conditions on the freeway. And obviously, there is a break behind this pursuit. But for officers to have that opportunity at this speed on the freeway is pretty rare. And they did an incredible job, didn't they? And, of course, yeah, yeah. they did. And, and Des had mentioned that uh, he's kind of really followed the these uh, pit maneuvers on the freeway mm -hmm. and only know that this is maybe the third one, which is pretty rare, obviously, over the number of years that you've covered this, Des. As we take a live look here again, we have guns drawn uh, from CHP as they uh, did a successful pit maneuver just moments ago on this uh, Toyota RAV4. Failure to yield is the want. The driver behind the wheel is a woman. The license plate for this vehicle comes out of Arizona. Oh. And it looks like oh. we are ending. What's going on, Des? I, I think they just fired some pepper balls maybe at, at the window there. I just saw uh, what, what looked like little, little pops of smoke that came from the uh, passenger side window coming hmm. out there. Uh, so let me just go and look over here. You can see they, they do have weapons drawn. Uh, if they have uh, less lethal and, and, and lethal both probably out there just in case. But I, I'm pretty sure that's what I just saw with look like little, yep, there's some more right there. You can see them. Oh. Uh, so they're, they're firing uh, those pepper balls at the window trying to get this driver's attention. And uh, let's see if, uh, if that does the trick because so far nothing has been getting through uh, to this driver. I mean, the first thing that they're going to do when they stop this car and their officers, they know they're safe and in place with their guns drawn, guns trained on this car is yell orders at this person to, you know, throw the keys out the window, put their hands out the window, um, you know, open the door from the outside 
and showing their hands the entire time. This means, I mean, if they're using these kind of means right now, Jeff, it means they were not being co cooperative and they knew it at that point. Yeah, and all the officers are on the passenger side of this vehicle, so I would assume that they would ask the driver to get over to the right-hand side of the vehicle to show the hands. We don't have the vantage point of that from this angle. Uh, there is something right there. Is that just the side mirror? But uh, Mike, uh, you have been, of course, uh, following this from the very beginning. Is there anything new? What's the latest on this? Yes, yeah, so I'm listening to the radio right now. Um, they they did, you know, as Des mentioned, did some less than lethal munitions. It sounds looks like pepper balls, and uh, they did say that she is still non-compliant after oh. the pepper balls. And you know, I, I think I can't. It was such a long pursuit. I think you were both here for it. But that one we had that ended um, in, I believe, Compton or Carson, and they. You know, they launched pepper ball after pepper ball after pepper ball, and eventually uh, SEB, the sheriff's version of SWAT, had to come in with a pole mm -hmm. and feed gas into the car to get it to come out. So to get that uh, suspect in that situation to come out. So, you know, they, it's very uncomfortable in there, but there's been a lot of uncomfortable things this driver has dealt with, and that hasn't gotten them to stop yet either. And so far, neither are the pepper balls. Sure, and with their stance, I mean, we know that they do not know if this person is armed or not. If they knew that, I think they might be yeah, a little bit more I mean, aggressive and, that, and go towards the right. Car. That's the that's the complications of not being able to identify who's in the car, right? Like, if, if you know who at least the registered owner is, you can figure out if they've got any you know guns registered to them, if they've got any history of that or anything like that. But they just simply don't know, and those windows are very dark. We continue to see them shooting uh, into this vehicle, Des. Uh, that is uh, focusing on the passenger side of the vehicle. Of course, the driver sitting in the driver's seat. You would think that that would be pretty impactful to the person inside. Um, those pepper balls uh, getting into the vehicle, breaking, and it appears to be like a pepper spray mm -hmm. that would fill that cabin. I'm surprised that we Burn don't see any activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Des? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to, to zoom in as far as we possibly can and see. Uh, and I, I can't tell if that is is broken glass or if that's just a, a lot of pepper on the on the glass from that, that have hit. It looks like they may have punctured the back window there, I, or, or if that's a reflection, I can't quite tell. Uh, but it does look like the driver had lost all four tires now that we can see uh, on this side. So uh, just really difficult to tell from that from that angle. But uh, I do believe I see some broken glass. Yeah, definitely. Now we can see it. There's there's definitely broken glass that they got there. So the, the, the suspect probably inhaled some of that pepper. Very uncomfortable. And we'll see if CHP decides to step up their tactics uh, from here. Um, and, I mean, I, all I can tell you with certainty is that there are a lot of very unhappy people on the five freeway right now. Oh, look, they're approaching the vehicle. Well, here they come. Yep. yep. With their body yep, they're shield, coming up step now behind with, with each the shield other. In front mm -hmm. and, two, and, and two officers. And let's see, now they're gonna, they're gonna, uh, they're gonna bat out the, the, the back window here and uh, they're probably just going to come and, and drag this driver out. It seems they, they seem very confident that uh, the person behind the wheel does not have a weapon with them. So three officers coming out, banging out both windows now, and uh, we'll see if they're going to uh, drag the suspect out here onto the five freeway. This is a technique that we often see deployed by the CHP. This is their training. They will go in and, you know, oftentimes we call the CHP a little bit more aggressive than other agencies because we do see them do this so early on after a pursuit, if you will. Uh, you know, other agencies, we might see them hang back for a little bit, maybe wait for, you know, SCB as we we're talking about the sheriff's, you know, SWAT team or, you know, for SWAT. But in this case, the CHP is you know, taking that risk and going with that uh, body shield and stacking behind each other. And they're, you know, pretty probably confident that this person is not armed and uh, went ahead and they are gonna get this person out of there. They're making quick work and mm -hmm. you gotta understand that they are communicating with that person right now because they're right up in her face and you know that they're ordering her to get out of the vehicle. So you just wonder if there was uh, a situation where she's incapacitated at this point in time because I don't see any movement mm -hmm. from inside. Uh, these uh, three officers are certainly right there and could grab her. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have the vantage point from the other side where oh, they're backing away. Maybe they're going to go over to the driver's side, side, get a better chance mm. to get to her uh, and probably break out the window or maybe get the door open and then drag her out that way. You know, maybe she was saying that she couldn't come out that way for whatever reason. Could be a console mm -hmm. in between them two. And it looks like they're breaking out the window now with the yeah. flashlight there or a, a tool. Okay, we got the door open. They're going to grab her, I would think, at any moment now. Des, why don't you take the call from here? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, they. I'm sure he, they, there was so much communication going on even before they opened the passenger side door. It, it seemed like that they were speaking to her, and then again after they opened the door, now over to the driver's side door, and still just even now they're giving her an opportunity to come out on her own accord. So you've seen, you know, a, a real a, amazing amount of patience with this entire situation and yanking now. Maybe yeah. it's still, they're probably having to take the seatbelt off of her. Maybe she's not even doing that. And here comes a, 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 more officers now coming up, but just uh, if she's gripping onto the steering wheel or what, but just refusing to get out of this uh, busted up, disabled Toyota RAV4 northbound on the five, just before the 405 freeway where all lanes are blocked for this. And uh, it's this is a very, very strange situation. Okay, now out. finally on out the on the ground. The ground. Here, yeah. here we have them. Yeah. They still have uh, guns at the ready, so there is a threat level there of some sort as they have this. We still have yet to see a good shot. A uh, number of officers, of course, and Des, they got her on the ground. They're going to handcuff her and we'll have, have this uh, person standing up in, in no time, I, I assume. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if if you know, uh, unless they they refuse to stand up or what, but I mean, they'll, they'll you know drag her back to the the squad car if if need be. But um, yeah, it, so out on the ground now, on on her stomach, uh, lots of officers standing by with with tasers and whatever else. Uh, they're going to open the trunk here and officially clear the vehicle. But again, they were very certain that she was the only one driving uh, this vehicle, but uh, still on the ground. Uh, at this point, very bizarre ending and uh, extremely obstinate suspect here refusing to cooperate. Yeah, we're talking about failure to yield, but Mike Rogers at the desk was telling us that the CHP might have had contact with this woman before this chase even began, right, Mike? Yeah, that's right. So that's how it all started. San Juan Capistrano officers were uh, responding to some sort of, of incident where they were dealing with her. And it's apparently as they tried to make contact with her, that's when she got in the car and took off and, you know, just, just never stopped until they literally made her stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, there she is in the middle, we uh, understand, as they take her back to one of the units. And uh, we're going to call that a code four. We're going to wrap this uh, latest L.A. pursuit of CHP, of a driver wanted for failure to yield. This ends up on uh, the five, uh, exit 157 San Fernando, uh, Mission Boulevard in Silmar from Orange County. It started just about 40 minutes ago. So we'll have that wrapped up. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Desmond Shop and SkyCal, Mike Rogers at the assignment desk, as we'll uh, go into KCAL News after this short break.